All right, so come to this uh, cyber security tutorial question which deals with Cisco Packet Tracer. So uh, it says Mansa Sugar Company PLC has had you as its networks administrator, and your first task is to configure the head office and remote office networks appropriate so they are able to communicate. A. The head office has 32 hosts, the remote office has 18 hosts. If the IP address and its mask is that, use VLCM to configure the entire network with IP addresses. So, uh, you are given 10 marks for that. So, let's start with subnetting. So, open up your notepad on the search bar. Then, uh, we need to discuss on how to subnet using VLCM. So, all right, so you are given uh, that IP address in subnet mask, which is a class C for Mansa Sugar Company. So, uh, subnetting using VLCM, you need to know how to come up with the VLCM table. So, a VLCM table basically it has the block size, then it also has uh, CIDR, which is cross race interdomain routing, and it, uh, we need to know the subnet mask for each particular uh, block size. So uh, now the block size start at 1, then CIDR starts at 32, then the subnet mask, uh, subnet mask is 255. So basically, <coughs> using this first information, when given such an IP address, if the subnet mask is 255, it means the default subnet mask is to be 255.255.255.255 if the block size is 1. So now, let's try to understand these things and what's the meaning for them. So basically, a block size um, helps you to know the number of hosts uh, a network can accommodate. So in a case where you, you want to know the number of hosts, you just say 1 minus 2. So why do we subtract 2? Is because we need to remove the IP address for the network and the broadcast. So minus 2 is for the network and broadcast. So the block size of 1 minus 2, we are getting negative 1, meaning there's no possible IP address which can be ad, uh, assigned to a device on that particular network. So you cannot use... A CIDR of slash 32 or a block size of 1. So let's talk about CIDR. So CIDR, which is class race interdomain routing, uh, basically indicates the number of ones in a network. So if we say slash 32, it means we have 32 ones. So let me show you. All right. So uh, slash 32, it means you have 32 ones in your network so a slash means the number of ones in that particular uh, subnet so basically why is it 255 when it's slash 32 it's because of these ones so this uh first three portion or part of a subnet to ip in a class c is what we call the network portion then this portion which has only eight bits it's called the host portion so we are interested in the host portion so if you know how to convert binary or if you don't know i'll show you that's where we're getting these uh, eight ones so if you have 255 uh, you want to convert it into base 2 so you have base 2 255 and r so now i'll show you how you convert into a binary so you just need to open up your calculator Open up your calculator, then follow along. So we have two, uh, 255. We have 255. If we divide it by 2, we get 127. So we are getting uh, 127 remainder 1. Then if 2, uh, you divide 2 into 127. 127 divide by 2. So you get 63. So here you get 63. Then the remainder is 1. 
then again we know if we divide 2 263 uh, we need to get 30, 31 all right so here we are getting uh, 31 then the remainder is 1 and if we divide 2 into 31 we need to get 15 and then the remainder is 1 and if we divide 2 into 15 it's 7 then the remainder uh, is 1 2 into 7 it's 3 the remainder is 1 and 2 into 3 it's 1 the remainder is 1 so 2 into 1 is 0 the remainder is 1 so if you count the number of ones starting at the bottom going up it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 therefore that's where we are getting these uh, eight ones as our 255 into binary so that's the meaning for CIDR now the meaning for a subnet mask which is this basically it tells you how many IP addresses can be assigned to a particular network so uh, following the block size that can help so now let's try to understand these things by completing this very same table in a simpler way all right so here uh, where we have block size we need to be multiplying by two so just follow along then for CIDR we need to be subtracting with one then for subnet mask we need to be subtracting the top block size so it will make sense once we start all right so now let's come up with our view same table so one by two it's two it's two minus one is the one so 255 minus one because it's the top block size if you see we have two then one at the top so it's 254 all right so we continue uh two by two it's four that one minus one stating 254 minus two is 252 Two five two, two uh, four by two it's eight. That one that minus one it's twenty nine. Then uh, two fifty two minus four. So basically we get uh, two fifty two minus four it's two forty eight. Then eight by two sixteen. Then uh, twenty nine minus one. 28 then 248 minus 8 it's 240 then 16 by 2 it's 32 uh, 28 minus 1 27 240 minus 16 uh, 240 minus 16 that's 224 and then 32 times 2 64 uh, 27 minus 1 is 26. Uh, then 2, 2, 4 minus 32, it's 1 and 2. Then 64 by 2, it's 128. 26 minus 1, 25. Then 192 minus 64, it's 128. Then you just put a 0 when you reach 128. Then 25 minus 1. Uh, that's 24 and then 128 there I'll just put a zero all right so now this is the simplest way for you to come up with the very same table so the simplest way or the other method is that you just need to know that a block size of one gives you slash 32 and 255 or if you don't know this subnet uh, subnet mask part you can just say you come up with this by multiplying by 2 up to get uh, to 128, then you put a 0 at the end. Now, for CIDR, basically, you know it's simple because you are just dropping them with 1. Then, after that, 
Okay, so for uh, the subnet mask, for you to get 255, you need to add 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128 for you to get 255. Then for you to get 254, you add starting where there's 2 going down for you to get that. So you continue doing that method or it will be simpler for you. Alright, so now that we know how to come up with the VSM table, we can follow this question. So the question says, uh, the head office has 32 hosts. So we'll do that. We'll say head office has 32 hosts. Okay. Then we have remote office, remote office with... 18 with 18 host, uh, host, hosts okay now knowing that in subnetting uh, using VOCM which is variable length subnet mask you need uh, to start with the network which has more hosts or devices on it so we can say the office has 32 the remote office has 18 this means that we need to start with 32 for the uh, head office. So doing that, we just need to know the block size for that network. And using our VSM verse ta uh, table, which block size can accommodate 32 hosts? So remember, to know the number of hosts, we say minus 2. So if we have a block size of 32, if we say 32 minus 2, that's 30, and 30 cannot accommodate 32. So we come with the 64. 64 minus 2, it's 62, and it can accommodate 32, so our block size is 64. Then we go to the number of uh, valid hosts for, for that block size, and we know it's 64 minus 2, which is giving us 62. So everything will be explained, then we go to the subnet mask, subnet mask. So as you can see, for 64, the subnet mask is 192. This one, 192. So, using this format, we need to represent it as that, then 192 at the end. So, here we just put 192. All right. So, now we can come up with the IP address range. IP address range. Then I'll try to explain some few steps. So, our IP is starting at dot zero. So, just copy that. We paste, then we need to know where to end. So basically now, if we are starting at 0, you just need to add the block size, which is 64 plus 0 for you to get 64. But we say minus 1 at the end uh, to maintain the uh, network and broadcast IP address, which will be 63. So I know it's not making sense, but I will explain uh, before finishing. Then we need to talk about the default gateway. So the default gateway, everything I will be explained, don't worry. So the default gateway is the next IP address after the network address. So this is our network address, which has dot zero. So the next IP address is dot one to represent the default uh, gateway. Now, let me explain. We said we can have 62 valid doors, right? So what we need to know is that this dot zero is an IP address and this dot 63 is an IP address, but this is the network address, and this is the broadcast address. If we know that this is an IP address, we can count as one, then we have uh, other 63. So if you say 63 minus one, you are getting 62 to maintain the number of valid IP addresses as. 62 that's why we are putting a 62 so we are removing this uh, network address and broadcast address that's the minus 2 you are seeing there hope you understand then now since we have submitted for the head office we just need to submit also for the remote office so i'll copy that then paste it down now uh before i i move on to the remote office head office as you can see it has 32 hosts, right? so we said it's accommodated the 64, meaning slash 26. So we need to uh, highlight that is slash 26. So, uh, which block size can accommodate 18 hosts now? 
So we have 32. 32 minus 2, it's 30, so it can accommodate 18. So it's under slash 27, as you can see. Then the block size, it's 32. If we talk about the valid dose, it will be 30 because it's 32 minus 2, which is giving us 30. Then for the subnet mask, uh, slash 32, as you can see, we have a subnet mask of 224, so we change this into 224. Now, since you ended uh, at dot 63 with your IP address range for the first subnet, you need to start at 64, dot 0. So you start at 64, then you do the same thing. 32 for the block size plus 64, you get 96, but we maintain that minus 1, so we get 95. So this will represent the network address and this will represent the uh, broadcast address. So if we say the default gateway is the next IP address after the network address, it means 64, the next one is 65. So now we are done with subnetting with the networks. I hope you understand. And we need to move on to subnetting the routers, these seven routers. So uh, our question has seven routers, but we don't need to treat them as seven routers, but two routers each. So routers, <coughs> we need to treat them as two uh, hosts, host each. So basically, which um, slash can, you see idea can accommodate uh, uh, two hosts. So basically we have four, because if we say, 4 minus 2, that's 2, so that we get 2 hosts, slash th uh, 30, as you can see. So I'll say, slash 30, then let me just copy this information, repeat it for the routers. All right, so as you can see, slash 30 now, uh, here, if we say the block size is 4, as you can see for slash 30, it's 4, and the subnet mask is 252, so 252. Then the host is supposed to be 2 because it's 4 minus 2, which is 2. Now we have that. So we can start uh, treating them as two uh, hosts each. So if I maximize this, you realize that if I start with router 10 and router 6, those are two routers. So I can treat them as such. So 10 and 6. So again, I can treat uh, 10 and 2. So I'll say 10 and 2. Again, I can treat 10 and 7. 10 and 7. I hope you are following. Then we can go 6 and 0. So we say 6 and 0. So we have 7 and 9, 7 and 9, then we have 11 and 0, 11 and 0, then we have 11 and 2, 11 and 2, then we have 11 and 9, 11 and 9. So I'll, I'll explain when we go into Cisco Packet Tracer while we are doing this. So now, let me just show you uh, an example using these two. Then I'll pause the video, finish everything with subnetting so that we maintain the time. So, all right. We ended subnetting at this IP address range. I'll copy that, then paste it below. So now, we have this IP address, but we ended at 95. So we need to start at 96. Hope you can remember that. Then we have a block size of 4. So 4 plus 96, we get 100 minus 1, we get 99. So that's our IP address range. So we can assign an IP address to uh, this router, which is 10 as so the IP address we can assign it's 97 and for router 6 we can assign is 98. So let me explain. 
here we are we, we add the network address which is 96 meaning the first ip address we can assign is 97 the following one is 98 and the broadcast is 99 so if you can see if we say how many ip addresses are in between there are two no wonder the hosts are two okay now that we understand that i'll just copy this then we maintain it with the second one so i'll post i'll post the video after this one so we ended at 99 as you can see i'll start at 100 then uh four plus hundred it's 104 minus one is 103 then here we have 10 and 2 so i'll just put two then we are at 100 i'll start assigning at 101 then followed by 102 102 all right so now I'll pause the video then we continue so uh you do it on your own but i'll share the answers okay so i'm done with the subnetting so as you can see that's the subnetting for all the remaining two routers so once you're done with the subnetting you just need to open up cisco packet tracer and uh, make this design assume so i'll open up cisco packet tracer so let's do that okay so i've op uh, opened up cisco packet tracer and uh, as you can see we need to create that topology as shown so uh, what i need to do is go under network devices i need to go under network devices then start dragging these pieces as well so let's drag that we have pc0 then we have pc1 so again i'll post the video so that i drag everything first okay so now we we go uh under our network devices we start dragging them so here we have uh, switches and routers and so on so i go under switches i get this switch then drag it here as my switch zero and drag it there as my switch one but here we have switch four so i need to change the name to switch four then now under routers i will start dragging uh, following their names so we have switch zero which is four three two one four three two one is that we drag it as our after zero then uh, so if it's not showing the names you can just go under options preferences make sure that you show uh, labels so once you do that you can uh, show their labels like that so i will continue dragging so let me pause the video okay so now that we are done displaying our nodes like that we need now to connect them with the cable so so under this connection tab we need to uh, get this copper straight through so it's used to connect different devices so for example laptop zero to that switch uh, so uh, you can do that but now uh, to connect the laptops I'll just we uh, pause the video so to save time again so now uh, I'll connect my servers so server one on that port so i'm following the sequence because i'll be doing i'll be doing villains so port numbers do matter so now uh, i'm done connecting each network but remember there's this router and that router connecting these two different uh, networks so if uh, you can take a look uh, on this router uh if you go under config then you check the uh type of first ethernet they have there's nowhere where you can put an ip address so as you can see there's nowhere where we can add an ip address using uh, this router so this question was just there to trick you or to see if you can think that in such a situation you need to change these two routers 
so i'll change the routers so you uh, get this x it, it's used uh, for canceling or deleting then you say delete then you put a router which will be suitable for this so under network devices routers i'll take pt router as my router 10 and router 11 again pt router so you just need to change the names as router 10 following the question in router 11 now again under this pit router which is 10 under configuration you can see that we have we only have one two three four uh first ethernet and how many connections do we need we have one two three four which is correct but these other routers cannot be connected uh, the other ports cannot be connected let me give an example if you take this cable then you choose this port it cannot connect because it's not the correct port therefore we need to increase the port numbers so you go under this router then physical uh, you make sure it's off switched off then you drag these ethernet uh, ports in the in those spaces then after doing that now you can switch it on then uh, wait for it to boot so you do the same to this router so i'll pause then do the same by increasing the uh, port okay now that you have increased the ports so let's connect again so uh, this switch and the router different devices we use this uh, cable so here i'll use first one and there i'll use uh okay just a minute just a minute okay so uh i was saying i'll connect uh using first one and here i'll choose uh first zero slash one then uh now what i'll do i'll do the same for this one i also get first one and connect this to uh, first one so again a minute okay so I'll connect it to first one so first one with another one so I'm just making them unique uh, so as to do my configurations neat so now I'll use this cable to connect same devices which are out there so it's called the copper crossover so uh we will do this connecting them now so we have that first zero with giga zero then we just continue doing that so here i'll maintain uh, a certain connection so as you can see i'm connecting them you can just follow along so it doesn't matter if you uh you use fast and giga it doesn't matter so let's uh, do that okay all right so we are done with the connection but as you can see my topology is not looking neat so i'll need to go under options preferences then uh, remove the port numbers and I'll bring it back during uh, vlans so as you can see now it's looking neat so uh, let me just make it look uh, professional okay so now we are done creating our topology so in a case where you want to start putting your labels you can use this for labels then you can even say uh, like cyber security uh, tutorial question tutorial question 
cybersecurity tutorial question like that so you can do that if you want then you can drag it the way you want but this is not necessary with your configuration so now remember what we submitted it will be useful so let's now uh, bring that up okay so the uh, first step we just need to configure our routers using this submitting so i'll give an example then post the video continue with the same thing so we have this submitting which says 10 and 6 as you can see this is our 10 and this is our 6 so the ip address for 10 is this one so i'll get this then between 10 and 6 i uh, just need to know the interface you have connected it to so the interface if we go under uh, preferences then again we start showing the the port numbers i already know the port numbers but i'm just showing you so as you can see for 10 it uh, first zero zero so i'll go under first zero zero config then first zero zero uh, paste that ip address so now that ip address if you remember the subnet mask for for our routers it's 252 as you can see like that 252 so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say 252 and then make sure it's on so i'll say on for it to be up and running so now uh remember this router 10 has this interface connecting to this network which is f0 slash 1 so uh which is f1 slash 0 by the way so if we go under this interface we will realize that our network uh for this if we call it as our head office if we call that network as our head office it means we need to put the default gateway which would in charge for delivering packets be, uh, within that network so we put the default gateway as the ip address then the subnet mask as you can see for this head office it's 192 so there we need to put 192 instead of 152 192 then you say on for it to be up and running so by doing that uh we are done configuring for router 10 so we go for 6 because we are doing 10 and 6 so we copy that ip address then under gig 0 slash 0 we need to make sure we go under config gig 0 slash 0 then we paste that ip address for routers as you know it's uh the default gate to oh the subnet mask is 252 so we say 252 then you switch it on for it to be up and running then you can see the connection is now green so i'll continue with this process but i'll post i'll post the video then configure all the remaining routers as i explained with this other side so for the uh, networks let me just show so as to make sure it's not confusing so we are saying this is the head office and the other side it's the remote office so again when putting the IP address for the remote office for router even, make sure that uh, under first one slash zero, you put the IP address for that network, which is the default gateway, and the default gateway is dot sixty five. So let me do that. So we put sixty five under that interface, which is uh, f one slash zero so we do that then the ip address as you can see the subnet mask it's 224 so i'll say 224 then make sure that it's up and running for it to be on so now i'll pause the video then continue okay so now i'm done with the configuration for the routers as you can see it's up and running so as i said just make sure that each two routers connecting each other you make sure that the port is uh really corresponding to your subnetting as i showed you earlier so now i need to show you an example by giving uh 
two lab laptops from the same network such as the head office that they can communicate so now here for the head office as you can see we have a range which is that and the default gateway of one so if the default gateway is one it means i can start assigning at dot two so under first laptop laptop zero go under desktop ip configuration then the ip address it needs to be dot two under static then the default uh subnet mask as you as you can see it's one nine two for the motor office then the default gateway is dot one so by doing that we are done configuring this pc then we can go maybe for laptop six desktop ip configuration so this one will be dot three because dot two is taken and the subnet mask is 192 then the default gateway is dot one now having these two pieces an ip address as you can see if i put a case it's showing that it's slash 26 whatsoever i've con uh, configured is correct let's see if they can communicate so if I want PC0 to communicate with P6, I'll go under command prompt, then say ping, then the IP address for uh, laptop 6, which is dot 3, as stated area on. So I'll ping that dot 3, and if I get these replies, which are TTLs, it means those devices can communicate uh, within the same network so our subnetting is co is correct but now in a case whereby we want this head office to communicate with that remote office let me say uh, the remote office as you can see this is the range and the default gateway is 65 so you can start assigning at dot 66 so I'll put laptop 4 as dot 66 so under IP configuration I'm putting dot 66 for laptop 4 then as you can see the subnet mask is 224 uh, for that network remote office then 65 default gateway now under um, this head office i want to see if it can communicate with the remote office i'll go under laptop zero then command prompt and try to ping uh, that network which is 66 the laptop four, which is dot 66 as you can see it's saying destination host unreachable meaning there are certain parameters uh, on these routers which are blocking them from communicating but in a case where it says timed out it means that you haven't configured these routers with ip addresses or your configuration is wrong so in our case our configuration is correct but we just don't have uh, protocols to use so that we can enable communication so that takes us to question b so let's see question b okay so question b states use ospf routing uh, to enable internet week to communicate five marks so basically ospf will enable us uh, for the head office and remote office to communicate so ospf is just a routing protocol which stands for open short test path first so open your test path first it looks for the root or path which, which is the shortest in your network to deliver packets or datagrams so um, using this topology we are given it to detect the shortest path to take to deliver those packets so let's see how we can use this open your test path command into all those seven routers Okay, so as you can see, um, I'm saying commands for OSPF. So basically, uh, if you are in router 10, uh, let me give an example. So there we have routers, then under routers, we have routers such as 10. So if you are dealing with router 10, the first thing you need to do uh, is to go and tap where there is router 10 so what i mean is this you tap where there is router 10 then under router 10 we will go under coi which is uh, which is called 
uh, command line interface. So under that command line interface, I'll just show the commands on my notepad. Under that command line interface, you say en to enable. So it will take you from the user mode into uh, the beverage mode. So you say en to enable. Then you say conf t, meaning configure terminal, which will enable you to go into the uh, global, global configuration mode. Now, since we are talking about OSPF, you need to say router OSPF, then you select any number you want, such as 1. So I'll say router OSPF 1. Then now, okay, so router OSPF 1, then you need to know uh, the network uh, it belongs. So in a case whereby router 10 is connected to head office network, so you need to know the network for the head office. So the network for the head office, as you can see, it's dot zero according to our subnetting. So network, I'll say it's dot zero. Then we need uh, to know the wildcard bits. So wildcard bits now, uh, this is how it goes about. So we have 192, we represent it with a zero. Dot, we have 168, we represent it with another zero. Dot 40, you represent it with a zero, then dot. So what I mean is that uh, 192.168.40 represents the network part, so it won't change. No wonder the zeros are just repeating. Then dot zero is the host part, so we need to put the block size but subtract it with one for us to know the wildcard bit. So the network uh, we are we have is the head office with a block size of 64. So th since the block size is 64, here I will put 63 if, if it's minus one. That's the uh, wildcard bits. After knowing the wildcard bits, we just need to indicate the area our network is. So you can select a number such as zero. So uh, if you don't understand this, I'll repeat again. So again, uh, this router 10 is connected to router 6, 2, and 7. So those are the networks. So here is what I'll do. I'll go wherever I see router 10 on my subnetting, that's the network. So as you can see, we have 9.96, we have dot hundred for 10, the network for router 10, and dot 104. So we have 96, 100, and 104. 96, 100, and 104. So I'll repeat that, 96, 100, and 104. So for 96, 100, and 104. So, there I'll say we have 96. And then we have 100 and 104. So, those are our networks. But, the world got be to change instead of 63. Remember, the routers have a block size of 4. So, the world got beat is 3 because 4 minus uh, 1 is 3. So the word card bit to be three. So by doing that, you are sure that OSPA for router 10, we are done. You just need to write these commands into your COI under router 10. So I'll show you. I'll copy this. Then go under router 10. Uh, click enter. Then I'll paste those commands. Then another enter. It means I've written the commands for the uh, this router 10. So I'll pause the video, then continue the same thing uh, for router, the, uh, the remaining routers, which is 6, 0, 11, 7, and 9. So I'll do that, then you also do the same, but remember, I'll share the uh, solutions, so don't worry. Okay, now that each router knows the networks it is connected to therefore it can advertise these networks to the other routers enabling inter-network communication so as we say direct area on we are trying to ping or to see if uh, laptop zero can communicate with laptop four meaning we are trying to see if head office can communicate with the remote office so 
now that we have enabled OSPF routing, we can go under our command prompt, you press up, then to bring back the previous commands, you can see that dot 66, if we try to ping or we try to see if they can communicate, it first says time doubt, then it can now communicate by giving those TTA replies. So I'll just repeat the upper command again so that you can see now that it can fully communicate. So now you can see that head office and remote office can communicate. So that's all about OSPF. So in a case whereby you want to see the open short test path I was talking about, you can just do this. Uh, you get a message, then you put this packet on laptop 0 and see if they can communicate with laptop 4. You remove it into the live mode to simulation mode, then uh, we are using ICMP to see if they can communicate. So don't worry about ICMP, you understand it. So as you can see, laptop 0 delivers the packet to switch 0 which will go to router 10, then from router 10 supposed to go to router 2, router 11, switch 4, and up to laptop 4, because that path is the shortest path as we can all see. We cannot take the wrong path if we are using OSPF. So basically guys, that's all about OSPF. As you can see, the packet is being delivered to laptop 4. So, now we need to add to Question C and see how it is. So, question C reads The head office with 32 hosts should have three villains one for the administration and the other two for production and marketing offices, respectively. If the server belongs to the marketing department, configure the villains to enable inter villain communication. So, now let's talk about villains. We start so this is question C so before we start uh, talking about the commands for villains we need to understand what villains means so villain stand, uh, stands for virtual local area network so basically villains are uh, just uh, like this local area network we're seeing for the head office but the problem with uh, this local area network is that each device in this network can communicate to each other in a case whereby you want to block certain packets from communicating or to put some securities we use what we call villains so we are creating virtual uh, local area networks so as to put some security and in virtual local area networks uh, port numbers uh, does a really great job. So now let's see how we can use some of the uh, the commands for VLANs. So VLANs are uh, virtual uh, VLANs are applied in a switch. So in your switch, you uh, go under command line interface, then say EN to enable, then conf t to configure terminal. Then now you just need to say VLAN, you specify the VLAN number, so you won't start at VLAN 1 because VLAN 1 is the default. As you can see, here if I put my case, it shows that VLAN 1 uh, is basically, uh, okay, anyway, what I'm explaining that VLAN 1 is the default, we don't use that, I'll show you later on but we will start assigning at VLAN 2 so if you say VLAN 2 you need to give it a name so a name in our case we said uh, we need to have following that question let me just do this following the question uh, we need to have following the question we need to have administration so I will say add name admin station then i'll go to vlan 3 so vlan 3 will be given a name which is production following what the question is saying and the last vlan which is vlan 4 should be given a name which is marketing so with those commands 
uh, it means that we have created our VLANs once we paste them into the uh, once we have paste them into the switch under COI but now this is where port numbers come in place like we really need to assign port numbers to each VLAN so they are saying uh, the server belongs to the uh, marketing department if I'm not mistaken so it's saying marketing department okay so server belongs to the marketing department you need to put that in mind so <coughs> let's make a decision we have administration i'll say administration should belong to laptop one in our case then production i'll say it needs to belong to uh, maybe these two laptops which is laptop zero and laptop six the last three marketing should belong to server one and the laptop uh, two because uh, marketing should have a server that's what the question says so i'll just uh, make a decision like that then now let's make sure that we are showing port numbers uh, so that we sh we know how to assign those port numbers like to their respective things so to assign a port number you just need to know the interface you are in so you say int for interface then the interface in our case for administration as you can see it's f0 slash 3 i'll say fa 0 slash 3 that's for the administration then we'll say switch port so uh switch port mode so we want it to access it so it's access then again we say switch port switch port access now what vlan is it accessing so as you can see administration belongs to vlan 2 so access vlan you say 2 so that's the command so i'll repeat these commands to the remaining uh, vlans then I'll, uh, I'll i'll play the video again once i'm done okay so as you can see i'm done writing the commands to assign uh, each vlan with the port now the last command i need to enter is the trunk command so uh, the trunk uh, is between the router connecting the the network with this switch zero so as you can see the port from that switch is fa0 slash 1 so 0 slash 1 is for the trunk then i'll say switch port mode trunk this time around without access so what a trunk does is that uh it allows many uh packets to enter it for easier uh, delivery so now uh, once i'm done with these commands i've written everything i'll copy go under switch zero then cli which is command line interface enter then i need to paste those commands another enter so now if you can see uh, it's more like each uh, one of these is in orange meaning it's initializing for it to be configured and it's done correct so if we put a case on this switch you can see uh the first port as a, a trunk with two dashes under vlan then the second port belongs to vlan 3 and so on so now we need to uh once we are done with this uh communication if we see we have put added some security because if we try to to ping laptop zero with laptop six uh, laptop six which was dot three it's not supposed to ping because of some securities which has been put in place so uh oh uh it's able to ping uh for now but basically it's not supposed to let me see what's what's the IP address list okay so uh basically it's it's able to ping because it's under production but the moment i try to ping with another villain 
uh, like laptop zero if i say laptop zero let me just uh, say it's dot four let me give an example if it's dot four and see if it can ping it won't ping because of that uh, security which has been put in place so uh, let's try to do that so the moment we uh, we put it as dot four we want to see if a laptop from production can communicate with a laptop from the administration it won't communicate because of the security that has been put in place but remember uh, the question says that we need to enable intervillain communication so now we need to create what we call sub inter uh, sub interfaces in the router connecting the remote office so here is what we need to do now okay so before we create those sub interfaces we need to understand one thing these villains cannot uh, use that first subnetting so we need to subnet again for these uh, villains so which are 32 from the head office so let's uh, start submitting now okay so we have sub uh we have departments which belong to the production marketing and administration now remember these are under our these are under our head office so i'll go where the head office was so this is the head office as you can see we need to understand that it, it has 32 hosts so we need to assign those 32 to each of these following departments so i'll say maybe production you have 12 uh, hosts then marketing uh, should have 10 and finally administration again should have 10 so if you add uh, 12 plus 10 plus 10 that's 32 so you have made uh, that fine decision now remember subnetting we start with the bigger network so production is bigger than the others because it has 12 so where we we see this uh for the head office i'll i'll take that because our initial was dot zero so we we'll start at dot zero for production so now production has two of us uh, using our vsm table which one can accommodate which block size can accommodate 12 as you can see 12 can be accommodated at 16 which is slash 28 with a subnet mask of 240 so i'll say the block size is 16 then the subnet is 240 then as you can see if it's 16 the valid dose can be 14 the valid hosts can be 14 and the range will go since we say 16 plus 0 which is 16 minus 1 15 so and the next default gate which is correct now we just need to know the slash so the CIDR basically for slash 16 as you can see it's slash 28 so I'll put slash 28 there then if you uh, you can remember subnetting where we ended is where we continue so I'll subnet for marketing and administration okay so as you can see both uh, marketing and administration has the same uh, subnet mask the block size the valid dose with the production department so now that we have submitted we need to assign uh, IP addresses to uh, those departments, uh, their respective devices. So under production, we have devices such as laptop zero. So uh, laptop zero should be given an IP address after that default gateway, which will be dot two. So again, apart from laptop zero 
apart from laptop zero uh under production we have what we call laptop six so laptop six will be uh dot three so understanding this is that we are just seeing we are just uh taking a look at the types of subnets we have uh, or the type of networks we have then assign them so i'll pause the video then continue okay now that i've uh, assigned each uh, ip address to its particular uh, device i will go for laptop zero i'll put those information as i'm seeing them so now i uh, you know it's dot two which is correct but the i uh, subnet mask it's 240 this time around i'll put 240 so it, it will be 240 why am i saying 140 it's supposed to be 240 so 240 then this is correct okay so that's for zero so i'll continue assigning with these or other remaining uh, devices for the head office okay so now that i've configured uh, as you can see production the default gateway is dot one marketing is dot 17 and the administration is dot 33 meaning uh this router which is router 10 supposed to know uh all those default gateways but it only has one interface as you can see it only has one interface uh for uh, for f1 slash zero and cannot uh, put three uh, default gateways so therefore we need to remove that uh, first uh, default gateway we added then just leave it uh, as on then we need to create a sub interface which can accommodate those three uh, default gateways under one interface which is fa1 slash zero for us to enable enter uh, vlan communication so let me give uh, a last example before we proceed. If you want to see administration now, as you can see, is dot state four after submitting. So it cannot communicate with the administration because they don't belong to the same network. Yes, it's the same network, but now we have created what we call virtual local area networks, which are villains. So they cannot communicate so because of that that's why we are saying we need to create now uh sub interfaces for that main interface for router 10 so now going to the commands for the sub interfaces so this is what we do the first thing once you go to router 10 under coi you enter you say enable en then conf t now uh you need to know the interface so the inter the main interface is fa1 slash zero which is connecting to this switch as you can see and since our first um our first villain if you if you can remember it's villain two for administration it's villain two for administration so we will say dot two to represent administration then we need to say encapsulation encapsulation dot one q then specify uh the the villain it belongs which is two now ip address or ip add for that uh default gateway for administration which is villain two we follow our subnetting for administration this is the default gateway which is 33 so we copy that then we paste it under that ip address then we need to know also the subnet mask for that same administration so as you can see for administration we have this subnet mask so i also get that then uh, after this or paste then i need to end then wr at configure my configuration so that is the first command the router should know for it to have that interface up and running so i need to do now for marketing and production 
I'm done for administration. So, same concept, same thing. Let's do it. Okay, now that we are done, I'll just copy these commands. Then go into my router 10. Then under COI, as we said. So, here we just need to exit. Then again, exit. Then exit to log out. Now that you are on this route again, you paste those commands, then you enter. So, now what this means is that this interface, which is FA1 slash 0, has these uh, sub interfaces, as you can see, with the default gateways of 33, 1, and 17. So, that enables our uh, devices now to communicate in this VLAN. So as you can see, uh, if we try now to communicate with the administration, it will communicate because of those uh, sub VLAN, uh, sub interfaces which uh, enable inter VLAN communication. So we are done with uh, question uh, C. So let's head to question 4. <laughs> I meant to say question D not four. So question D reads the remote branch has accounts uh as accounts office and the IT department. The accounts department has a file server, create two villains and provide an access list that will block all traffic, save the accounts and the administration from accessing the file server. So Remember, because we are, uh, we are told to create uh, VLANs again, so we need to submit uh, for these two departments, which is the account and IT department. Then let's do that first and then I'll explain. So where we ended for the remote office is where we'll start. So we'll start at .64 uh, because that, that was our start. So basically, we'll do that. Okay, so now we just need to configure uh, these subnetting. So IT department, we have IT department, we have laptop three with this IP address. So IT department, as you can see, IT department. So you, you just make a decision which department should be that and that. So that IP address so let's just do that so that's the IP address all right so let me check for the IP address first which uh, which we should be removed so this okay so as we are saying laptop 3 it department has this ip address and uh, submit mask of 240 then default gateway is 65 as we can see from our subnetting then it department again we have laptop 5 which has this ip address so again we put that uh, ip address so again, it's 240. And then 65. Okay. And then we have laptop 4 from the accounts with that IP address. Laptop 4 from the accounts with that IP address. So that's the IP address. Then again, it's 240. Then this time around, the default gateway is not 65 but it's 81 so we do that and then last three we have server zero uh which has that ip address so the ip addresses can be assigned two way in two ways so 
we have started which we can assign manually like we are doing and we have DHCP which is as a server to assign uh, automatically these IP addresses, default gateways and subnet mask and it's there to save time if your network is big. So now uh, that we are done with our submitting, remember again uh, this will lead to our networks not to communicate with each other from different departments say the accounts won't communicate with the IT because they don't have what we call sub interfaces so again we need to do that but it's a repetition so I'll pause the video then do it then just enter the commands so again before creating sub uh, interfaces remember we are supposed to create uh, VLANs so the commands for creating villains as you can see is just a repetition like we have done previously so you create for the it department and you create for the accounts then you assign them with uh, certain port numbers you want then the trunk uh, to that interface which is connecting the main router to that network so once you do that you just enter your commands in uh, into your switch for or your switch then you paste them it will initialize like it did previously meaning everything is correct now uh, by doing that you are assured that uh, let me say a, a laptop from the accounts cannot communicate with a laptop from the IT department so an example I'll give is ping so let's ping a device which is in the IT. So let me just check the uh, IP address for, for the IT. So we have dot sixty six. So if we try to ping dot sixty six, uh, if we try to ping dot sixty six, you realize that they cannot communicate because of the villains which is putting certain security. Now, due to that. Uh, that's why we are creating uh, those sub uh, interfaces so that uh, it enable the VLAN communication. So again, we do the same thing like we did previously. Then you just paste, uh, paste them to the nearest uh, router connecting the network like that. Then after that is done, if you try to see if... Uh, the accounts can communicate with the IT. Now you'll be assured that communication will start after enabling that uh, uh, interface for for it to to start interviewing communication. So let's wait and see if it start communicating. So maybe it's initializing when it's taking time. So just repeat it again, and then. We'll see if it will work out or not. <clears throat> so let's give it time. Okay, so uh, let's see. Now you can see that uh, they are able to communicate. Now, uh, D, this question D, if you remember, it was saying that we need to make sure that we block traffic which is coming from this administration uh going to the server for the accounts so if we check the ip address for the accounts it's uh for the accounts the ip address it's dot 83 so if we we try to ping dot 83 uh if you want to see if the administration can communicate with the file server from the accounts which is dot eighty three um, you will see that without using access control lists which is SEL uh, they can communicate because OSPF is running and there's nothing blocking it. So now SEL is act like a firewall to block some packets from entering into the network so let's see how we can run that command for SELs so this time around let me show you the configuration direct into 
uh, the device. So, uh, LCLs uh, in two different forms. We have standard and extended. So, standard are uh, just based on the source IP address, so thereby needs to be applied to the destination. And while extended, they can deal with the protocol, the destination, and the source IP address. So, let's try to apply standard SEOs. So, uh, for example, this administration wants to communicate with the file server. So, this is inbound packets and this is outbound packets. So, uh, since this is the source, this is the source and this is the destination. Therefore, the SLs should be applied on this router closest to the destination. So, I'll go into this router, which is closer to the destination. Then, I uh, will say conf t to go into the global configuration mode. Then, hit question mark if you are not sure with what you are doing. And then, you can see we have access list. So, we have access list now. We will say access. So, you can start with IP. IP, then access list. So, IP access list. So, you hit tab IP access list. Then, you want to choose standard. So, you say standard. You say standard. Then you can choose a certain number or weight you want to use. In our case, we use a number. Let me say one. So if you use that standard, which is one, uh, we, you are sure that now we are under the configuration for SEO, which is standard. So now we want to make sure that we, we deny a certain packet. So we will say deny. Okay, so we will deny uh, a certain uh, network. So there we will choose uh, an IP address. So remember, this uh, administration we are trying to block. The administration we are trying to block uh, is basically from the uh, a certain villain. So let's go back to our villains and see which uh, network is the administration belonging to so we'll go under administration and you can see uh, administration is here so this is the network for administration administration so we need to to, to know this network and now uh, if we know the network for the administration, which is that, we can come back uh, to our commands. So, here we can see uh, we want to, to block that uh, IP address. And wildcard bits now, for that, just need to know the actual block size which is this 16 so it to be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0.15 instead of 16 if you can remember what i said then there you are done and now uh what we need to do after that is we need to go to a specific interface uh, so the interface we are trying to block after we, we, we deny that is the interface uh, which is uh, entering that specific port uh, for the account. So let me do that. Okay, so to simplify what I'm trying to talk about, let me close this so that I will just explain without this long procedure. So here is the thing. Uh, we want to block traffic which is coming from the router 10, uh, which is coming from the administration going to the server, but it should be applied.
multiply the router uh, 11. So once we say en conf t access list one, as you saw, one is for standard. We need to deny this specific uh, laptop, not the network, but this laptop. So laptop is dot at 34. So we need to, to deny this dot 34 by saying dot 34. We deny that laptop, then this is the wildcard it belongs to. Then after denying, any SEL should have a, a permit which says allow all or allow any because if you just say deny that specific device, it can also deny uh, legitimate packets from entering. Now, the interface which you are saying, the one I was talking about, interface, uh, uh, the interface which the packets should go to, uh, like for, for this one in our case, it's uh, F0 slash 1. So we are using F0 slash 1 in our case. Then the administration, uh, which villain did it belong to, if you can remember. So we go under administration and you check for the villain. Administration is villain 2. So if it belongs to villain 2, you just say dot 2 to represent villain 2. Then uh, access uh, group 1, as we said 1, out it's, it's representing this is outbound, it's going inbound. So we're trying to block packets which are outbound. So now entering this command into <coughs> this, let me exit because I was just trying to show you how to use the command. Uh, if you are not sure. So, if we enter that command, invalid uh, interface name. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me check the interface first. Oh, it was supposed to be one slash zero, not zero slash one. So, I've made that correction. So, let's do it again so it's one slash zero not zero slash one yeah not access group what's happening now it's ip access group not just access group so you say ip access group not just access group Okay, sorry for these continuous errors. Let's hope there is no other error so that we, we finish up our... Okay, so as you can see, now the command is on. So let's see if we can try to, to uh, communicate with that server again. So if you hit enter, as you can see, it's working out. Maybe it's still initializing. So you just need to give it some time. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one hour. Uh, this is Soko James, uh, cyber security student for Kupasamakasa University. And see you in the next tutorial. So this is a uh, new cyber security tutorials. If you're interested, you can just contact me using the details in the description or phone number if you want to contact me. Thank you.